It was on March the 3rd of 96. I was at my desk, you know, working and, and, you know, and I was just meditating a little bit on what I should preach on on the coming Wednesday night Bible study. As I was sitting there, God gave me a vision. And in this vision, I had a, I saw a coliseum full of women. And it's similar to these, uh, similar to these uh, uh, women's seminars that preachers hold. It was just women. I just saw just a coliseum full of women. And as I was looking at this scene, the Lord asked me a question. He said, how should women be treated? And I thought about it for a moment, and as I thought about it, these words came up in my mind. Now, it was all in my mind now, but God asked me this question. And in my mind, I gave this answer. He said, how should women be treated? And in my mind, I said, like fine crystals. Then, the Lord gave me, then he spoke and said, some of the women in the church, instead of being fine crystals or beer bottles. Well, I jumped up and, and ran to the men's room. And the reason is because I wasn't expecting God to tell me that. See, having been in church for ever since I can't remember, I know there are certain sermons that certain people in the church don't like. Male, female, it doesn't really matter. And as I was standing in the men's room, I didn't have to go to the men's room, and I thought, why am I running from what God gave me? I, I can't. He gave it to me. I got a, I got a minister on it regardless. So I went back to, to my desk and I began to think about what God gave me. And I began to think, well, I need to write down fine crystal and beer ball and make a comparison. So I wrote down crystal first. I wrote down crystal and I began to try to think of certain uh, attributes of a fine crystal or fine channel. Well, actually, it's fine channel. It represents class, social functions, fine restaurants. A fine crystal is beautiful. A fine crystal is expensive. A fine crystal is pure. It's clear. You can see through it. And even when you take it out in the sun, especially if it you know, has a lot of different distinctive carvings in it, you know, and how it's made, I mean, it sparkles in the sun. It's just beautiful. A fine crystal is delicate. You handle it with care. And usually, fine crystals are housed in its own house. It's called a, it's called a, a, a china cabinet. You know, it's got its own house where, you know, you, it, it, especially in your, in your home, where you can show it off. See, this is my fine china. You don't abuse fine china. See, another thing is that you don't put anything in fine china or crystal. Normally, you know, people drink champagne from it, wine, tea, or water. It's basically that category. You know, some people can get a little bit devilish and use beer in it, but normally that's not the purpose of fine chow. And when you finish drinking from a, a crystal, you wash it and put it up. For next time. Now let's compare a fine crystal with a beer bottle. Now I realize now that most people don't drink from beer bottles. Well, they do, but it's mostly cans now. Now this was in 96 now when God spoke this to me. But let me just also say this. Well, let me finish this. 
Beer bottles are normally just bottles. They're not expensive. They represent clubs, joints, wild parties, sexual looseness. They're normally dark in color. So you can't see what's in it. I can tell you some things that are done with bill balls I don't even want to talk about <laughs> how they are used bill balls are usually laid anywhere and normally they are trashed you know trashed you know the trash can are just thrown against the curb or whatever when people are finished with them throw it in the garbage can now notice the comparison. And as I finished writing these things down, the Lord spoke this to me. He said, there are some of God's fine channel, even now are being turned into beer bottles. So what is this about? Simple. A lot of God's daughters are fooling around with a lot of ungodly, unchristian men. Oh, because he, he is so fine. He got a lot of money. He got a nice ride. He got his own place. He got a good job. But he's not a Christian. Well, what about the men in the church? Well, you see, those men in the church... They are not manly enough. Oh yes. Being a pastor myself and being in church all my life, I know. See, they are not manly enough. See, they want a man. So they marry this ungodly man and he uses her. He talks about her. He manipulates her. He cusses her out. He beats her. He cheats on her. He manipulates her. Uses her. I mean, just degrades her. But she wasn't a man. She didn't want a nice Christian man that would treat her right. Well, I've seen a lot of these people. Somebody that would respect her that will love her, that won't cheat on her. And normally, they marry these men thinking that they can convert them. Normally, it don't happen. They are normally converted back into the world or they lower their standards. The scripture says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs 31, 10 and 30. See, a lot of these men really want a, a godly, clean woman anyway because I've noticed that there are a lot of women that are in the world, especially into sin, they, they age real fast. I know godly women in their 80s that look like they're in their 50s. And I have seen ungodly women that's in their 50s look like my grandmother. So if many of these men are smart, they will go to the church and act Christian uh, lie to get you. Women, you need to be intelligent. Learn how to listen to the voice of the Lord or you will be deceived. God bless you.